questions for all three of us at the end. Tomorrow we're going to talk also about uh, conference committee, education committee, and uh, special interest groups and how Koha US can help facil facilitate those. So we're going to get started first with the finance committee. Thank you, Lizette. You all know me as the treasurer. My name is John Sturbins, and I've been serving as treasurer of this organization since 2017. Uh, when I was elected and Robin uh, Hastings handed me all of the information that she had in a sunflower bank folder and said, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> then she followed that with, this is yours now. And we had a nice meeting in, in which she uh, basically gave me the framework, what is the financial framework of this organization, which in and of itself is just a little under three years old uh, with the actions that were taken to formally incorporate us as a legal entity recognized as a nonprofit organization by the Internal Revenue Service and incorporated within the state of Kansas. The Finance Committee in and of itself is also relatively new. There had really been no Finance Committee prior to my being treasurer. And we currently have three members, me, the treasurer, which serves as the chair, and I'm very grateful for the help of Candace Hope and Eli Anthony. Uh, Candace, who's been with me since the beginning, and Eli, who joined last year in Portland, he came up to me and he said, what's involved with this finance committee? And I said, well, I write a bunch of stuff, you read a bunch of stuff, you provide me with feedback, and everybody's happy. He's like, okay, I think I can do that. So Eli joined, uh, Eli joined the finance committee last year. This is a still relatively small committee, and I would like to have more people on it. So if there is anybody that would like to consider joining the finance committee, and if you have any more questions uh, after what I'm done speaking with here, please feel free to come up and see me or email me at treasurer at koha-us.org, and I'd be happy to uh, talk to you and fill you in with any details that you have. So the finance committee is actually pretty straightforward. It's got money as its objective. The organization finances. We do a number of different things. These are what we consider our primary goals. Perhaps the biggest one is to make recommendations to the board regarding financial matters and policies. There was a lot of that to do uh, at first when I took over. And one of the first things we did was actually switch bank accounts from uh, an organization, Sunflower Bank actually, based out of Kansas to something that had a little bit more uh, national breadth. We did the research. I met with a few different branch managers with options that were uh, local to me, which was kind of important when you consider the fact that I was handling all of the money and really needed to be able to go to a branch to do that. Uh, we made our recommendation and we continue to write various smaller documents from time to time relating to how finances of the organization should be handled. One of the things we are currently working on right now is a draft of something what I'm calling a financial manager position. Separate from the treasurer, the financial manager would be a person that is responsible for the day-to-day -day finance, the monitoring of the bank accounts, the monitoring of the PayPal account, and uh, being an authorized signer on those accounts so that there is stability within finances, particularly as the treasurer, the treasurer position within the board uh, cycles off. So we're in the midst of coming up with that. I hope to have something in place for review by the board and then the membership for voting. I'm hoping really by, oh, well, not next month, that's not good, November. I suddenly realized it wasn't August like it's been for the past few years. So uh, that is something that is coming very shortly will be uh, one of those types of recommendations. One of the other things the Finance Committee does is it oversees Koha U.S. fiscal controls. What's that mean? It means that we make sure that money is handled properly. As, as the treasurer, even I as the treasurer, cannot unilaterally just spend money. It's the Finance Committee charge to put together recommendations as to how money is to be spent, present that to the board, and then the board has final say on whether or not an expense should actually be approved. Because we're still a small organization, that actually doesn't take very much effort. I send an email out to officers at Kohai US. We've got this coming up. Go ahead and give me authorization to spend it. That is what a fiscal control would be. And the Finance Committee helps to make sure that all of that takes place properly. 
one of the most important things we handle outside of the group in and of itself is to ensure continued compliance with federal and state of Kansas nonprofit organization requirements. That's actually a really fancy sentence to say, we make sure we stay good with the government. With the federal government, particularly one recognized as a nonprofit organization, we have one form that we as an organization have to file every year. It's actually a very simple form. It takes me about five minutes to submit because we are that small. And the other thing we have to do every year is we have to file a nonprofit organization annual report with the state of Kansas because the state of Kansas is our state of incorporation. Those two acts in and of themselves are not really very time consuming, but the underlying mechanisms that require these reports can change from year to year. So one of the things we do is to make sure that we continue to be in compliance with all of the reporting requirements that we have at both the federal and state levels. And then finally, we allocate funds for Koha US and Koha US committee and initiatives. This includes the drafting of the annual budget. Every year in December, uh, first presented to the board and then to the membership in general, is a budget for the upcoming year. The first budget, as I remember writing in it, was very long on words and short on numbers because we really didn't have that much of a financial history to draw upon. We've since changed. We've got now two complete years of, of financial data. And when the fiscal year 2020 budget is written, hopefully it will be more concrete in terms of the numbers that we are able to present. That annual report includes numbers that we expect to be able to uh, get in terms of income from membership and income from the conference, as well as expenses, both related to the organization uh, generally and those related to the conference. And as you might expect, as a small organization, we really don't have that much in terms of organizational expenses. We've got a domain name. Ooh, we pay $40 to the state of Kansas as required so that they will accept our absolutely required state of Kansas report. We've got the possibility in future years for things like uh, Zoom, a Zoom room. We've got the possibility for other things. These are the types of things that are outlined in the annual report, as well as the budget request for the upcoming year. And one of the new things that happened this year, as the charge of this organization is to support Koha and its development, as well as the growth of its members, all of the money, money that, that we raise, raise that is not used towards organizational expenses of any type goes towards those processes. And last year we had $1,900 that was left over from last year's budget, as well as from the time periods before, that this year are being directed towards the efforts of the development committee. And uh, the membership actually voted on that. And Lizette will talk a little bit about that when she comes up here and talks about development. So that's really the, the big things that the Finance Committee does. I hope I've helped to shed some light on the mysterious money handlings that go on. Uh, and you've all seen the, the very lovely financial reports that are issued every month. At least they're included in the link. So I, I like to think that when Jason includes the link within the monthly agenda, that people go, oh, let's take a look at this. And even from look, oh, you know, if you only look at it for 30 seconds, which is Usually about, about how long it would take to review them. At least I know people are looking at them. So uh, thank you for letting me talk about the finance committee. Let me turn it over back to you. Thank you, Jason. So the development committee, uh, before I go into our first development cycle, I'm going to talk a little bit about how we came up with the development cycle. We had a, about a year and a half ago formed a a committee whose job we held at the development committee, but it was pretty, pretty much just to uh, make a process for doing this development cycle. And it took, took us a while, we did a lot of meetings and lots of back and forth, and came up with the development cycle procedure, which was approved and is on our website at coha-us.org, approved by the board and the voting membership. And then um, last year, right at the end of the year, when I became vice president, we um, got a new committee together that was going to actually do developments because we hadn't had that. There had been like six or eight months in between when it got approved and when it when we started talking about actually doing the development because um, 
a lot of the people who had signed on to be on the original committee didn't, they just wanted to do that part where they wrote up the policy and most of them didn't really want to be involved with the actually going through the process because a lot of them were um, already part of development processes like with, at their organizations. And so we got some new people. We've got uh, myself, Joe, who's here, and then uh, Nancy Keener and Owen, who can be here today, and Todd, who's also going to talk about fundraising in a little bit. So our first development cycle in uh, in opened in January for uh, proposals for what people wanted to get funded or co-sponsored by Koha US, and it took us until May before we voted on it because we ended up needing a lot more information than we had initially put on the form. There's a lot of stuff that we put as optional that it turned out really we needed that information to have all the information for a fair vote. And so like we have already edited our form that we use so that in the future it'll be a faster process. So it's been a lot of learning. Uh, we didn't require a bug number for tracking which we don't necessarily need to in the future, but I think if we don't require it, then as soon as it gets voted on, we need to make one to start tracking that information in the bug zone. Um, the one that we voted on to fund is we're going to co-sponsor bug 20948, which has to do with the whole request uh, on the details page. And luckily, Christopher, who but in <coughs> that computer really needs a mouse. Yeah, it does. So here, even if say there's 35 holds on this Tomb Raider DVD, if the 35th hold is an item level hold on that item, it will always say item level hold for delivery at whatever library and for the patron. Um, which can be really misleading because then people think, oh, the next hold is an item level hold, even if it's not. And that's something that a lot of people have expressed being a problem for their libraries. I know it's something that we get complaints about um, at Valmet, we're a large consortium. Lots of people place item level holds for like, at the end of the list, when this is done, it needs to come back and go to tech to get the barcode replaced or whatever but then it shows up like an item level hold. And so um, the, what we're gonna, what the scope of the development is, is uh, Bywater has quoted us a thousand dollars to mask, change the message basically. So instead of saying there's an item level hold for this patron, even if they aren't the next patron, it would just say something like there is an item level hold on this item and make it less seem like it's like this is the next item but at some point there is an item to hold on this item and we're going to be co-sponsoring for probably it sounds like probably five hundred dollars or so and uh cin and nettles are also co-sponsoring the development and um yeah so it's been like a really interesting process to go through it because we had a lot of like theory of how it would be handled and we didn't have a lot of the details of like what information we needed at different steps of the process and so we've gathered a lot of that kind of information so when we do our next um, development cycle in January we're hoping that it'll go a lot smoother and we can get things move in more rapidly uh, and one thing that's nice about this development is that we're we have about $1,900 as John said that we can put towards these kinds of things and we're only going to be spending like $500 of that, which leaves us with room for next year, even if we didn't get any additional money to be able to sponsor or co-sponsor an additional thing. Um, so that's exciting. And we're always looking for new people on all the committees. Uh, if you're ever interested in joining or finding out anything more about the committees, you can email us at info at coha dash us.org and um, all, all of our meeting times are on our website on the calendar if you want to like look and see when they are all of them are done on zoom except this week because we're doing 
education is meeting uh, for a lunch this week for our monthly meeting and development. Oh yeah, the development committee is meeting on Friday morning here. Uh, Nancy wasn't gonna be able to make this month anyway and then Owen's gonna just zoom in with us. And so we're gonna be able to meet if anyone's interested in like coming to that meeting and finding out more. And then our next person is Todd for the fundraising committee. So fundraising is exciting, and uh, I can tell that a lot of people are motivated by it, by the um, by the number of people who stuck around to hear about it. <laughs> so <laughs> um, fundraising, uh, the one thing that you need to know about fundraising, especially with our organization, is that we are a 501c3, which makes it nonprofit. Um, we are sort of uniquely positioned at that point. Uh, if anybody was to go and make a donation, um, you have the benefit at the end of the year, the tax year, that you can go ahead and use that as a bit of a write-off. I'm not sure how that would work for your own taxes, but just please keep that in mind. Um, so having that tax exempt status, uh, it works for both of us, it works both ways, but we do rely on our community and our community members to help us with some things that we have uh, that we'd like to move through, as you can tell, especially with developments. That's one of the things that most people have on their minds that they would like to uh, have more developments. And so getting the financial resources that are necessary to try to push some of this through would be fantastic. Um, so why is fundraising important to our organization? So it helps with events like this. Um, yesterday we had to go out and we had to get some uh, different things that we can use. You can see they're on, on the back table. It allows us to be able to go make those purchases and um, it's benefit to not only OI US, but it's a benefit to people who are participating as well on this conference to be able to enjoy um, what OI US can bring and give to you. Um, we rely on that in a couple different ways. I don't know if anyone has ever gone to our website and checked out our PayPal link, but you can always go there and you can click on it and you can leave a donation if you'd like. But um, yeah, so you can go there and you can uh, you can leave a donation. And um, I don't know if anyone also saw that we were doing a little bit of a fundraiser with t-shirts and with with uh, mugs and with um, water containers, but uh, we're sort of finding different ways that we can actually try to create and, and find resources where we can continue with uh, these types of events and be able to offer you um, the goodies that we have here. Uh, you can also um, consider maybe uh, in, in making any kind of contribution, you can also think about the following here and what we're working towards and trying to make these types of events and maybe even participate in other conferences that uh, annual conferences, whether they be states or they might be national, it'd be great to have some representation there. Um, so what can fundraising do for Koha US? So it offers a lot of flexibility. It gives us a lot of room to be able to do different things, one with the organization, um, two, but it allows us to be able to look into different things that uh, educational and development and other things that maybe you want to bring to the table and, um, and make recommendations to the organization for so that we have something more to give back to the community. Educational resources, I think, are always highly in demand. We are talking about doing video documentation. Um, we're talking about different things that we might be able to use in the community development-wise. Uh, there's been some discussion I keep bringing up that it'd be fun to have kind of a Koha on a stick. It'd be nice to have a live version of Koha that you might be able to just go ahead and take, and load directly onto your computer, you can download it, or you can be able to um, purchase it from our website. Uh, you know, these are nice little things that we can come up with and even other ideas that you might want to include and bring back to us so that we can make that inclusive and uh, we've got resources, educational, development wise that can be used and, uh, and potentially make a little revenue for us. So what options are we currently exploring? So we've got a number of different ideas. Um, they've been brought up over the course of the past few years. One of them recently um, that we had on the table, and I think it's kind of come back up again, is something called a colorathon. Right, Jesse? Yeah. Yeah. So we think a colorathon would be kind of fun. I don't know if it's going to be a six hour event or if it would be an eight hour or 12 hour event, but it gives everybody an opportunity to go ahead and participate. Uh, you could come in and, and listen to different presentations, educational presentations. People would be able to participate from potentially, of course, throughout the United States, but if they found out about it in another country, somewhere in the world, 
I don't think it would be able to participate. Um, we try to make it fee based if you were a member, then you would be able to get in for one fee. If you weren't a member, you'd be able to get in at another fee. So, you know, that's one type of idea that um, we're kind of banding about and we'd like to be able to pursue here hopefully within the next six to eight months. Um, there are a lot of different ideas. And I know you guys are very creative. So, you know, in your local library, um, it's not the easiest thing. I think Jesse and uh, Adam Brooks have put together, um, they did a fun run one time for the library system. And they had really good luck with that. You kind of find a format for what they did and be able to share that with other libraries and see if there's some potential. Um, it doesn't work for everybody, but for the libraries who can do something like that, it'd be a lot of fun to see if we can get some engagement. Um, I mean, you can be as creative as you want to. You can come up with even a bike across your state or a bike across your county or, you know, a, a community bike ride where maybe it was going to be a fundraiser. Um, I started to get pretty enthusiastic when I'm talking about fundraising, and I think I start to lose people because fundraising is sort of like the bottom basement department that nobody ever really wants to think about. You know, they love knowing that there's somebody there pursuing it, but that they're hidden away, and if they never come to your cubicle, or they never call you, or they never send you an email, everybody's usually pretty happy about that. You know, it's it's just one of those things. So, what it really needs from us, especially as a community, is just more community involvement. We need people to be more interested. Yeah, Robin. Oh, I was going to bring that up. Thank you. Um, one of the things that you can do, of course, is uh, with Amazon. If you go to Amazon Smiles and um, you you uh, link sort of, or you associate your account with um, Poha US, then a portion of um, the money that you know you spend when you're on Amazon, you get a fraction of that. And last year, I think it amounted to 170? No, more than that. Uh, $450. $450? Right? $450? Pretty good. We're at like 100 and something right now, you oh, said? We're, we're, I think we're at 450 Year. So we're at one oh. quarter to go yet. Oh, okay. So we're doing pretty good. So if you can associate your account back to Amazon Smiles, tell your friends, tell your families, let them know, and um, if they can help us out, that would be fantastic. So, um, so there are a lot of great ideas, and we really would need your input. And don't be shy about coming. Um, our committees are wide open. We may have, uh, you may not want to be a committee member. You might want to be just a participant from the outside. But if you've got some ideas, if there's a way that we can help you with your library, if there's a way that it can come back and help Koha US as well as Koha. We'd love to talk to you about it. So please don't be shy about coming in. And you might have an idea that we can use. It'd be fantastic. Um, we aren't currently going to any national or international conferences, of course. We don't have the resources to do that. Um, but it would be fun to put something together to go to a national conference and to maybe have a runner, maybe have a day of golf. We just need to figure these things out. It's those pieces. And if you have the experience in doing that, be very beneficial if you wouldn't mind bringing that back to the group. So where are we and where are we going? Um, I can tell you last year, um, has anybody ever gone in and used our PayPal link on the Kohai US website? Right, so we've got a couple of people in here who have done that. So it's not something you're just going to do. Usually when you go and do that, it's going to be a purchase. Um, you go to our website, it's going to be a donation, or it could be related to a potential future purchase if we start thinking about merchandising. Um, again, merchandising. We're able to make a little money. I bought a T-shirt and I got a water bottle. So I'm some, I saw some people have some months. So um, we'll be able to exercise that PayPal link. Um, but uh, you, you just you just need to you just need to be active. You just need to um, get in there and, and use that PayPal link and let us know that you're out there so that we can use that course development and educational resources. Last year, just through that PayPal link alone. In supporting Koha US and Koha in Portland, Oregon, um, we were able to raise, raise over ten thousand dollars. I think is what it was. Now that was great because we were able to give um, everybody a point where they can go and pick and pay. And we had a lot of participants, but I would say that probably ninety-eight percent of everything that came in actually came in from other support vendors. We did see a small amount come in from libraries. Um, I think one of the fantastic points of Koha is that it is open source and that there is a level of expectation. Whenever you do something from open source communities, especially if it's as productive as Kohai, you sort of have an expectation that there's going to be an upgrade. You know there is. There's going to be one every six months. There are monthly updates. And it's kind of easy to get back in the rocking chair and think that 
well, these guys are putting it together. Let's go ahead and take advantage of what's out there. Fair enough. I mean, we all can and we all should. But there are times, too, where you can you know, look within yourself and you can see how that software is having an impact on your organization and what it's doing to alleviate just the financials that you, you were having to deal with prior, um, before you left whatever you were on and you didn't go out. So, um, you know, if you take the time, really, and you try to equate uh, Koha to what you were using previously and the benefit that it's serving you right now, it'd be fantastic if you could maybe even take a look at your budget at the end of the year you would be able to, um, you know, maybe come up with a line item where there's going to be some money in there for educational resources, maybe develop something to donate back to the community. Everybody knows there's an end of the year funding budget that normally is just kind of dangling there and everybody's making a mad rush, especially in government business, to go out or in government organizations to go out and spend. And uh, we'd love to talk to you if you've got some of that. We can find the resources and, and find the different developments. Um, and probably how to get you there. Anyways, with that $10,000, it was very helpful. Um, last year with Koha US and Koha Khan, be able to put on, I thought, a pretty darn dynamic conference, and we were able to do it jointly, and it was quite successful. So this is what your financial resources, your contributions um, will go for. So that's about it. Um, we really would like your input. We'd love it if you guys came to the Koha U.S. meetings. We've got board meetings that anybody can come to. We've got general meetings that you're all in. Member or not, the membership is a driver too. And if you take a look at their website, there's uh, an explanation on how to become a member. And then I think there are ways that you can actually save on your membership costs. Um, take a look at that closely. Um, you know, it, it might benefit you. Um, and if it does, fantastic. But we still need to, we need bodies, we need, we need people to participate. And um, we really would like to build a strong group. My goal is ultimately we've got two different organizations to rely on. We've got Co op proper when you go to Koha and community. And then we've got Koha US. Koha US is based in the US. But we don't really turn anybody away. You know, if there are people that are interested and they want to be a part of the organization, then they're from Koha. Um, we just want the end of it. That's about it. Anybody have any questions? I'm going to make a comment. You know, if you're interested in getting getting more involved, when is your presentation, Robin? If you're interested in getting more involved, there is a presentation tomorrow morning at 8:30. I think in Here. this room, Robin Hastings will do a presentation on. How to be an affected member of an organization like Doha US. But followed by the other half of this uh, presentation. Yeah. Um, one thing about Amazon Smile is that if your organization is ordering through Amazon, you can set up your organization for Amazon Smile. I know a couple of organizations have done that, and I'm sure that's part of where the money's coming from. Where they're doing like all their DVD ordering through Amazon and all of that, you know, a, a portion of all of that goes back to Kohai you know, quarterly. Um, and do you guys have any questions for us about these three committees or joining the committees or anything or ideas about fundraising for Todd? He's back in the back now. We all have faster than the salary so. Half now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to talk for I could talk, start talking about the conference committee because we've got tons to talk about with that. Well, actually, the, here's the question I'll ask for all the people that talk about committees. What's the one thing somebody could do that would help? If, there's, if there was just one thing you wanted people to do, what would it be? Mm, yeah. I don't know if everyone heard that, but Jesse said, tell all your other staff members about Koha US and getting involved. Always remember that as members of this your organization, the board is not running this just because they love Koha, which they do. They want to help advance the software. And as members in this group, you clearly believe in that mission as well. It's great to. If you have the opportunity.
opportunity to, to participate in the committee because that's really another way where you can help drive the direction of the organization and the software by contributing to it in that way also. Did everyone hear that? Um, yeah, that's really good, John. Also, you know, we have so many great resources in our community, you know, that can to like have educational tools already that they could come to the education meetings, even if they weren't coming all the time, and be like, here's some things that I know about or that I made that I'm willing to share that we can put up on the website. Or even if you can't make it to the meeting, if you just wanna like email us, if you have something that you think would be helpful for the community, um, just trying to communicate with us whatever you've got to share. And I don't know if Todd has anything else to say. Yeah. He's actively fundraising. <laughs> oh, did you have anything else you wanted to add? One thing that people could do? There's one thing people could do to just be involved. I can tell you, this is I, I do better talking about Prohan than I do talking about funding. I get I get blank papers and I, I mean I'm not, this is not a pay thing. It's really not that fun. Um, nobody wants to have a fundraiser. When's the last time somebody came to your house, unless they had chocolate, unless they had m ms unless they had something that they're going to sell you that was going to be an exchange? This is an app. So we're going to find nice ways to ask. And I will be sending that emails. And I will be you know, inquiring if you're going to be able to do something. But it's, it's not that easy. I just did a presentation at Coacon, and I got up there and I felt like I just lost it and forgot everything that I was sitting on. People start talking about fundraising. Everybody senses about it. And I get that. You know, I don't really like it when people come to my door. I don't like it when, you know, I don't like it when the guy on the corner is standing there and he's got, he wants to clean my window. I mean, even that makes me So, I'm probably going too far with this, but I, all I can say is that I'm sympathetic, I'm empathetic, and I understand. But we're in a community that relies on, and especially our organization, relies on us to make that small contribution. You know, if you think, you can go into work and spend five bucks on Starbucks. And I did that. I like Starbucks. But how easy is it to take five bucks out of your pocket? Or how easy is it to go to the store and get a 10 or 20 or $25 gift card and just say no online PayPal and go ahead and register that? There's a number of different ways you can do this. And I'm not saying you have to. I'm just saying give it some consideration. Let's do something for us. If we can get our, if we can get our money up, this is fantastic. Because Everybody knows that in our community we have funds. So we have difficulty trying to get those funds signed up. We're trying to find easier ways to get our community, Koha US and Koha, to go out there and say, oh, this is going to be easy. I know how to use the box. I can spin it up. Oh, you know, all I have to do is get that web number of times in here. But if we can motivate people, let's say it's, we pay you. Maybe you build up credits. Maybe you have development credits at Bywater or through Koha US. Maybe there's a way that we can do that. If you're able to go to a sign up and do a QA, maybe there's another way. And maybe having money on our end will allow us to be able to get a lot more of this taken care of. Bywater has, um, we have a thing called the plaque. And what we do is we spin up um, Koha for universities. So if you're a teaching university that is you know, library science, they have that to you. So we do that free of charge. I think it would be fantastic especially motivating for kids that are going to library school is to let them know they can make $25 for a sign on. Well, if you're not working a job and you want 25 bucks to go to the yoga stand and you want to get some food after class or something like that, how cool would that be? And if you could automate that even more to where as soon as they're done with the sign on, you know, it's automatically reflected, you click the button, it says yes, you did it, approved, and then something can be transferred over, maybe we create an account or something. So there's got to be ways we can facilitate this thing. We have some bugs going on. It would be quite awesome. That really enhanced Koha, and it would really, I think, enhance Koha. Thanks, Todd. Um, if you guys don't have any more questions for us, I have a question for you, which is what would you guys like to see from these three committees? If anything. <laughs> well, the committee says something, I'm going to be in trouble. 
<laughs> oh, Fred has a new poem? Newish. Yeah, I think it's. <laughs> Believe me, that fundraiser's been promoted. It's been, it's been proposed. It's so yeah. much to keep Fred from being a poem. Here's Fred. Yeah, actually, I tried that before Delane. Okay, this. Yeah, that before Delane was it like five bucks to leave the room, and if you don't pay, you have to pay. Uh, it was ten dollars. Oh, ten dollars. And then the next day I said uh, twenty dollars, and someone said, "Wait, wait, you said ten. I said you should have bought the ticket yesterday, <laughs> which we didn't rehearse. Okay, this one is from my uh, other half. Uh, it's about central line infections. Yeah, I don't see anyone nodding. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the only thing you probably need to know is uh, Flapsy uh, is a central line associated bloodstream infection, which is really bad. You really don't want one. It can lead to sepsis and death. So, yeah, it's, it, there's not a whole lot of glory in getting it. And, uh, Points go to anyone who can recognize the uh, poem I actually stole this from. It does get kind of preachy, especially. Little Andy Clancy came into our ward one day. To treat her cost a hundred grand, insurance wouldn't pay. Bacteria were everywhere. She came in like a flood. She buried up the central line. She buried up the blood. The patients on dialysis came down with Clancy's too. A careful blood analysis showed data we were through. We didn't want her spreading to the hospital throughout, but the Clancy's gonna get you if you don't wash out. Soon after Annie Clancy introduced her evil cousin, C. Diff came in and spread infected patients by the dozen. He spread like wildfire and he put on quite a show of diarrhea and the smell that all the nurses know. We didn't want these visitors, we knew we had to change. The Clancy free environment had be happily arranged. We looked at all our practices that caused the germs to sprout. Just the classy when you got us, because we don't wash. Out. We wash our hands, and then we put on gloves outside the door. But gloves are not invincible. It's not what gloves are for. We put our hands into our pockets, and we scratch our head and touch the dirty sheets that are upon the patient's bed. No wonder that the samples that we drew came back and yes. We didn't keep a germ-free field. Blood is clean, I guess, because gloves can get contaminated. Germs are all about, and the plants is going to get you if you don't wash out. Now we wash our hands and put on gowns and gloves as well. Replace the central lines on schedule. Do not let them dwell. Use caps infused with alcohol in all the IV ports, and bleach and ultraviolet lights from lanterns make the ports. Use sterile packs for TPN with gloves and wipes and more so we can feed our patients and keep Clancy off the floor. It's due contamination with attention and play it out because the Clancy is going to get you if you don't wash out. Now, little Andy Clancy hasn't been here for a year, and her evil cousin seated is no more a thing to fear. But they could both come keeping back and come to that after day. If we don't do all that we can, keep them both at bay. Use sterile gloves and wash your hands with lots of soap and water. Your central lines and TPN just like you know you are. But don't touch spray objects with your gloves because germs are all about. And the clabs he's going to get you if you don't wash out. Just for your information, Fred, there were four people watching on YouTube Live before you started. And then after you started, it just went down to one. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I wrote, read the same poem at the uh, Medical Library Association's dinner uh, in May, and actually got an applause or two. I liked it. I thought it was very good. Yeah. I'll read another one tomorrow in my afternoon presentation. But don't worry, it's really short. <laughs> Thanks, Fred. Yeah. But we can set up for break number two. Yeah, we can do that. 
Let me stop the the YouTube live. Yeah. If you stop sharing your screen, that'll make it. Uh, thank you. <laughs>